Hi folks, welcome to uh, Discover Dorico for July. Um, as, as always, I'm sure if there's any audio problems or anything else, uh, somebody will let me know. Uh, looks like we've got people from well across the world again. Um, not because he's, uh, I can see he's signed in, but uh, if you're a Finale user and you're interested in a video uh, on the, the differences and, and why a Finale user might want to switch to use Dorico, um, then uh, Dan did a, a session yesterday that I uh, also watched, which was very good. And considering he said he hasn't been using Dorico for that long, he's uh, he's learned quite a lot. Um, so if you're interested, there's uh, uh, actually just check on our Facebook page. So um, Facebook Facebook dot com forward slash groups forward slash Dorico, uh, and there's a link there to Dan's video, and you can check that out. Um, so uh, let's. I presume um, everybody can hear me and uh, and that's all okay. Um, let me know if not. So um, in the last month, uh, there's uh, you know all sorts of things been happening. I've uh, also been off in Canada, so I've been teaching some young kids as young as uh, seven or eight years old to use Dorico Elements. And actually, they've been doing some great compositions with it. Um, they do start music quite early um, in some of those Yamaha music schools. Um, but that was a, a very good session and quite interesting. Um, today, uh, of course, we'll probably get an ice cream van at some point, I guess about 15 minutes normally, but today we're going to talk about expression maps and, uh, playing techniques and percussion maps and all that sort of things. So I'm going to start off with explaining how Dorico works and what kind of some of the defaults for things and settings and those kind of things are. Um, but, we kind of then will look into when you change things, you know, what might start to go wrong, what do you also need to check, those kind of things, how the whole chain is is lined up for playing techniques and those kind of things and and how they they all work. Um, so if I'll I'll try not to you know, I'll try to explain things clearly, I'll try to form full sentences. Um, but uh, if there's any questions, of course, you can ask in the comments and I'll I'll check in there if there's anything I'm not making too clear. Um, so uh, I presume everybody can uh, see the screen uh, and everything else is okay. So let's go from here. So you can follow along, of course, if if you want to, um, you can watch this session. It will be it will be available again later. So if you want to follow again, then um, then you can uh, we can do some of that. So I'll start with this new blank project I've got um, now. To start off with, actually, one of the differences is just between solo and section players. And we've kind of talked about this, but maybe not looked about looked at all of the options as why. So I'm going to press Shift P for the add solo player to start off with and add a violin. Uh, and then I'm going to press Shift Alt P uh, and I'm going to add a violin. And the difference there you'll see on the left here is I've got a solo violin and the Shift Alt P here was a section violin. Um, I just realized I've not got the uh, keyboard shortcuts turned on. So just let me turn those on for a second. Uh, you want to potentially see keystrokes. There we go. Um, so uh, we've got violin and a uh, so solo violin and a section violin. And we have kind of vaguely mentioned this before. But if we just kind of have a look in play mode over here, I'm just going to make this window smaller. I've got a better snap tool installed so I can throw that window over to one side so that behind I can also see the Halion player and switch between them. So you'll see that my solo violin has added the violin solo combi patch here, and the section one has added violins 1A combi. So Dorico by default loads two different sounds depending on uh, which one you choose for solo or section. And when I go to edit, you can see here some of the options uh, uh, which are listed as expressions that exist for the violin uh, solo and also for the violin's one section sound uh, and some of the options that exist in here. Um, so what happens is, you know, by it's doing those kind of things by default. So if we just um, start writing a basic bit of music in here, uh, let's say um, something like this. Um, then that's a different sound to if we were to switch to the staff below and do, in fact, we'll do the, let's do the same kind of thing or make it slightly different like that. Um, in fact, let's, let's do, let's do this and make it, you know, it'll fit in a, a neat number of bars then. So, uh, so you've got different sounds for the so, solo violin. And the section violin. Um, but also, when you do things like put staccato dots on, so if we do this and this, 
then when I play this from the beginning, so you'll get this, the uh, staccato sound. So they're not just shorter notes, but they also change. So if I switch over to Halium when you do when when it does this, you'll see it automatically scrolls down to staccato, and you can also see that at the bottom of the screen, um, you'll get the where these yellow keys are. These are the key switches. Now the idea of these is that if you were to play this patch live uh, with a keyboard attached, you can play a note, press one of these key switches, and you'll get a different effect. And Dorico does some of that for you. So if I press play on this one here, you'll see it starts out. And it switches to staccato, and then switches back to the legato fast. And then for the violins here, it starts legato, switches to spiccato instead, and then switches to legato. So let's look at why that happens and how these kind of things are set up to start off with, because then we'll have an understanding of how, when we want to change things, uh, how all of these things work and how they're all put together. Um, so we'll go to um, we'll go to play mode to start off with. And we'll have a look in here at the expression maps, and this is what's being used. So here we have a violin one, uh, sorry, a violin solo and a violin's combi uh, expression maps. And so this is what's actually happening. However, an important thing, if I just cancel that, an important thing first is this cog here, which is the endpoint setup cog. So if I select this one here, we have here on channel one, in fact, let's make this really, really clear and obvious. So if I just expand all of the, these two violins here, we'll see what's going on. So all we've done so far is basically add a solo violin and a section violin, and Dorico has set all these other things up for us. So here in this endpoint setup cog, it's automatically added uh, two uh, channels in here. Uh, and on the first one, because this is the solo violin here, it's added the HSO violin solo expression map. And for the section one, it's added the HSO violins combi. So we've loaded the right expression map for the two sounds that we want to use. So when you go and have a look at those expression maps in the play expression maps menu, uh, the violin solo has the uh, natural sound. And you'll see here, there's a key switch listed, which is uh, note number 30. And the legato one is note number 29. And that's because there is a legato fast and a legato patch. So there's two different options it can choose there. And then spiccato and staccato are both listed here as 22. And that's because there isn't a, a different spiccato patch. There's just a staccato patch. So we've, we've sent them both to the same. And then pizzicato is 25 and tremolo is 24. Now at the moment, Actually, expression maps in, in, in Dorico are kind of, um, they're at quite an early stage. And so there are a few things like trills that at the moment don't play back because different sample libraries and different MIDI devices and all sorts of things play back uh, trills or have different options for playing trills as to whether they're actually playing two notes, whether there's a patch for it, whether it's a half note trill or a whole note trill and um, th those kind of things. So. Um, uh, semitone or tone. Um, so at the moment, we'll, we'll ignore the trills one because those ones don't play back and don't work at the moment. But you can see what happens here is that for the uh, staccato option for the violin, it presses key switch 22. So, and it's also in, in the Halion interface here, it's listed as um, uh, A sharp minus one for staccato. So what happens, and if you look at this uh, keyboard down here, is I will go and press play again. And Dorico uh, will play, and as it does it, it presses this A sharp and then goes back to that A sharp again. So it's playing those key switches underneath for you. Uh, and that's how it's changing the sounds. Now, uh, one important thing to know here is that if you said, oh, actually, you know, I, for this violin here, I would quite like to change the sound. If you uh, select the, uh, the load program option here to choose a different sound, and let's say you went for the GM violin, so we'll load the GM violin in there. Um, then uh, down here, you can see now there are there are lots and lots of white keys, which means the GM violin has a full range of the entire piano, but there are no key switches. So what happens here is if I press play now, then you'll hear other notes, low notes down here, which are being played. Um, and that's because it's playing the key switches. Key switches, all it's doing is sending a note at that point. So then you get this kind of low rumble that happens at the same time in your piece. Um, so 
uh, and, you know, and, and that's when you start to think, well, hang on, what, what's going on here? Now, the problem is that when you choose Inhalion at the moment, at least, Dorico doesn't know which key switch. It doesn't know to change the key switch automatically. So you have to go to the endpoint setup and change this expression map. So in this case, for example, I would just change it to default because the default one doesn't have any key switches in it. So now when you play this piece, it won't send the, the, uh, the key switches. So I just get the notes that I'm intending to, to get at that point. OK? So the important thing to know here is that if you change a patch in Halion or you decide you want to use something else, also make sure you go in here, click on the cog, and change the expression map that you're using. And which expression map you change to is you know, what, what we can then uh, look at next, I guess. Um, so uh, let, let me just check. Um, I've, I don't think there's any notes about that one or comments about that one uh, so far. So that, that's OK. So the important thing is, if you change a patch, you may also need to use change the expression map. Otherwise, um, you know, you might get those odd low notes sounding or anything else or the wrong things. Because you can also, um, for example, if you wanted to use something like Iconica, so the uh, new Steinberg library at the moment. Now, we're looking into uh, how we can support this in a more automated fashion. Um, but for now, let's do something like, uh, there's a lot of violin options. Let's pick the violins one standard. Here we go. So this will uh, load this patch into this slot. And uh, yes, tremolo does play back. In fact, we'll look at some tremolo options in a, in a second, um, I think. So loading the patch it's a bigger patch and it's not on a fast disk by the looks of it so here uh, in iconico it's got staccato pizzicato marcato and various other options so uh, if i don't set anything so i've still got the default i'll show you i've still got in here i've got the default expression map then what you get when i press play is it's only playing staccato so the reason it's only playing staccato is that seems to be the, the default in this patch that I've listed, not sustain or legato or anything else. So at this point, you know, you, you can't switch to the HSO one because that would have the key switches in the wrong place because you can see there's a, a small set of key switches here, but they're not all the same ones that you had even for the, the HSO violins. So this is where you might start to do things like go to uh, expression maps and make your own. So in this case, what I'm actually going to do is choose the HSO violin solo um, and press duplicate. I could press new and add a, a complete new one. But in this case, partly for speed, I'll, I'll just duplicate the one I've got. So I've duplicated it and I'm going to edit this one. So I'm going to call this one uh, Iconica Violin Standard. Uh, and now you can change the key switches and things that are happening. So natural, actually, what I probably want to use is this one that says sustain, which is um, D sharp zero. Um, I've looked some of these up previously. So I think D sharp zero is going to be 25. These numbers that I'm entering are the, the MIDI note numbers. And this is the kind of thing that you'd normally get from the, the manual um, that comes with all of these options. Because sometimes they'll list a, uh, you know, a, a key switch um, number here. Or, or name and some and in Dorico to stop some of the confusion we've actually switched to MIDI note numbers and you say what confusion um, some sample libraries set C4 as middle C and some of them say C3 is middle C and depending on which one they set is uh, middle C of course we can put everything out by an octave so we've said actually we'll just do MIDI note numbers um, uh, and then we'll be okay so uh, from uh, do this slightly from memory um, so if natural is 25, legato here with the next semitone up, so that will be uh, 26. Um, spiccato, what options do we have here? We don't have spiccato at the moment, so we'll use the staccato, which is C0, which I believe will be note 24. We'll do the same for staccato. And we could also set pizzicato, which is going to be the next one up, so that'll be 25, which happens to be correct. And tremolo, which is F. Um, so I'm going to have to think for a minute and go uh, four, five, six, seven, eight, no, 29. Um, there we go. So if we set some of those, so I've now got an Iconica one, but I need to remember to use it. So now I need to remember to click on the cog and tell this violin to use it. So here's Iconica violin standard. So now when I press play, I get, oh, 
I've set them the wrong way around, haven't I? I've set Pizzicato uh, to be in there. I thought I clicked on something accidentally. So go back to here. Oh, yes, I put Pizzicato in twice. Fool. Uh, so uh, natural was, oops, no, it's D sharp. So I've entered the wrong one. So actually it should be 27, I think. So I'll press OK. There we go, sustain. So I, it's, it's now switching appropriately. So now I have a, a little expression map there for the... Um, uh, for the iconica violin. So, as I said, we're, you know, the, the, it could take a lot of work to set all of this up uh, initially. Of course, when you uh, have set any of these up, you can then, in the expression maps option, um, you can uh, export these libraries. So, if you set up uh, any of these yourself that you want to use in other scores, you can then export them. If you have any of them, of course, that exist in Cubase already, you can import a Cubase expression map as well. Um, and as I said, we're looking to be able to support uh, more of Iconica, um, you know, um, by default. If this is all confusing, um, this is where um, our playback templates normally come in. So we have one, of course, for HSO at the moment that ships with Dorico, which is why you don't need to worry about it. And you can also, if you have Note Performer installed, then you can switch to the Note Performer. And what that does is when it loads a Note Performer instrument, it's also loading the correct key switch at that point and the, the key switch information, the expression maps for uh, Note Performer. So uh, we hope in, uh, in the future that we'll be able to put one together for you so that you can also do that with Iconica. But there are a lot of options in Iconica and there are also lots of other sample libraries. So if you wanted to start looking at your own and understanding how things work, then um, you know the, the, that gives you a start. Uh, now, just before I uh, carry on, I'm just gonna check the comments for a second. Um, bear with me a second. I think these have been answered by other people. Um, yes, for MIDI note values, there are some tables. Um, and after I finish this session, I'll put some links to those in the, the, the information section under the video. Um, so if you come back in a, in a bit, in fact, Paul, the, the, the ones you mentioned, the number of tables that you use all the time, um, if you want to email me the link, then I'll, I'll include that underneath the video at the end of this session so that you can refer to those as well. Um, let me just check. I think uh, most of those are OK at the moment. So I'm going to carry on for a minute um, with a couple of other things. So uh, one of the new things in the version 2 was with playing techniques uh, and things that you can do in playing techniques. Um, so let me just, um, I'll use this, this piece, actually. So let's just uh, do that. And let's remove some of these notes. So we've just got uh, one instrument to play with for now. Uh, now, I'm going to go back to the beginning. So if you start playing with things and things all go wrong, this is also what you can do. Uh, you can go to the play menu. You can go to playback template. And this is where you can choose other, uh, other playback templates. But because HSSE and HSO is already selected for Dorico Pro, then I can just press OK. Uh, and it will, uh, of course, uh, it goes away at that point. It reloads the samples that I need, all the correct samples. Um, so if I was to reopen this, you then see that you get the violin solo combi and the violin uh, for the violin section sound that I had before. So that's a reset for everything. So if you are playing around with things uh, and you just want to reset the sounds back to, to normal, uh, you can just use that option. It hasn't deleted my expression map that I made. All it's done is rechosen all of the defaults, uh, the default sounds and the default expression maps. So for um, for making playing techniques, now there is a in the version history. Here's the Dorico 2 version history PDF. There's information about the playing techniques editor and, and what all of the options do in in there and how you can. Uh, you know, use it to control various things. But I thought we'd have a look at some of these options. So if you want that, you can uh, go and download the version history document, and that information is in there. But let's have a look at it. So I'm going to make a new one. So I'm going to open this panel, which is the uh, on the right hand side for playing techniques. And um, oh, <laughs> somebody's uh, just uh, Dan's just asked a question. Um, HSSA and HSO. Um, so it's the um, as you can see here, it says Halion Sonic SE, which is HSSE, um, which is, uh, and you get a kind of smaller set of sounds with Dorico elements that, that play in HSSE, 
but HSO is the Halian Symphonic Orchestra, which is the extra sampled sounds that you also get uh, with Dorico Pro. Uh, so hopefully that one, uh, well, that'll answer that bit. So anyway, so in the playing techniques section here, oh, in case you missed it, ice cream ban. Yeah, I knew it happened at some point. So I'm, uh, we have playing techniques, and we have common ones, and we have wind and brass and percussion and strings and all sorts of options uh, down here. I'm just going to make a common one for now, so it can apply to all instruments. Uh, if you want to do specific ones, then you can uh, apply them now or later into specific families. And there's an edit button for the existing ones, and there's a plus button. So I'll press plus, and we'll make a new, uh, a new playing technique. So let's call this one uh, Wobble. And um, we'll make a kind of uh, a wobble. Um, so I can leave this in the, the category common. This is where you could change the, the category if you wanted to. Uh, and for now, we'll leave the text, uh, the type as text, and we'll just put wobble. So what I put in here is what's going to appear on the piece. Um, and no one, I'm not going to get you an ice cream. Uh, the popover text, this is what do you want to type in the popover to uh, get this to appear. Uh, so we'll put wobble in there as well. And then the playing technique, this is the uh, the playback playing technique that will be used. So I'm going to use one that isn't being used yet so far. And I found there was a wide vibrato one, which you know might be maybe not suitable, but in this particular case, I'll use it. So there's a wide vibrato playing technique. And you can also edit various things about this. I need this one to be articulation type direction. Um, and if you want to know more about all of the you know, various options in here, then, as I said, have a look in the version history document because it, uh, all of the, the details are in there. So, uh, so I've set that bit up. So now I can press OK. And now here I have a wobble option. So I can apply that. I can you know, select a note and press wobble. Or I can, uh, in here, in the Shift P popover, I can start typing wobble. And it appears. And I've got my, my own playing technique here. However, that's not going to do anything yet because um, wide vibrato that I set, so I'll just go back, um, wide vibrato that I set as a playing technique isn't defined anywhere and we need to define that for it to do anything. So if I go uh, back to play mode uh, and up here and go to the expression maps, the one that I'm using, we already know, is the HSO violin solo. If you aren't sure, then you can click on the endpoints cog and find out. I can press the plus and I can add wide vibrato into here. And I can add a note event, so a key switch of, oh, I've forgotten, I think it's 26. Um, and what I'm going to be using, if we go here in the violin solo section, I just press this edit, show the edit page for all of the options. So for this violin, I want, I thought maybe we could use one of these ornament options. So the uh, ornament whole tone and half tone. Um, so 26 would be this D0 option here. Um, and if you're not sure what these are and you know which notes they are, you can play them on a MIDI keyboard, uh, uh, and these are, these switches down here will play as well. Um, so I want 26 for the wide vibrato. So now when I go back here and I press play, and so just so you can see it uh, happening as well, if I press play and switch over here, you'll see this switches down to the ornament tone and then it's not going back. Now, because this is um, um, expression maps are still slightly embryonic in, in Dorico at the moment, there are some things that you uh, need to cancel. Um, so, so it knows you know, what, what the opposite is. It's, it's obvious to a human in some cases what some of these options are. Maybe it isn't in this case with Wobble, but with some things it's obvious. Um, it's also not necessarily obvious at the moment um, and, and what we need to program in is, you know, when you've got multiple changes, if you have, uh, you know, um, uh, you know, Colenio and various other things all happening at the same time, um, what should happen uh, will depend on the sample library you're using, because, of course, um, the, the sample library might not have all of the options. So what should it fall back to and all those kind of options, um, you know, and so all of that needs to be uh, needs to be figured out. Uh, to work out you know what should what should happen at this point and um, um, but also when you have to do things like reset things so if i click on this note here one of the options at the moment is just to say nat and to go back to natural so that will then effectively turn it off at this point turn off the wobble option nat because it, we have defined already by default in all of the expression maps there is a natural if we go to the violin solo here is a natural option 
um, then that will be defined and we'll play back accordingly. And just bear with me two seconds. Sorry about that. A bit of water, and I'll um, stop coughing now. So, uh, so yeah, yeah. So that will. So sometimes you'll need to put this NAT in just to reset things. However, slightly annoying because it might turn up and you don't want it to. The only way I can think of at the moment would be to change the color option, maybe change the opacity down or something like that, so that you can't see it. However, also be aware because I'm sure some of you mention it will also appear in the parts uh, at the moment as well so you might also need to hide it there if you if you don't want it so you know th there are some things that you know in some cases you'll need to play with or will need to to add some things but there are a couple of other nice things you can do uh, with some of these so for example with the the wobble i made earlier if we go and edit this one you can change the text option to something like uh, to glyph and change what this actually looks like. So I'll click on this um, edit composite button here. I'm going to delete the word wobble because I don't want that. I'm going to go to, um, let's have multi-segment lines. And in here, I'm going to choose this one. So I'll add that glyph, here it is. I can zoom out a bit so I can see what's going on. I can change the size of it. I can change the position of things in here as well. Uh, and then I press OK. So now I have a symbol for that. So if I press OK, uh, so there you go. You can see it now on the score. You can also do things like um, maybe you want to default placement to be above. So uh, when you say in here, I can still type wobble. Uh, it will then put it above by default and will, of course, still play back. There you go. Um, I'm just going to check the comments for a second. Somebody's talking about. The kid coming in in the walker. What? No, I don't, I don't really understand. I think, um, yes, I'll, I'll just carry on. You, you, you carry on there in the comment section. And yes, um, I don't have a nanny. Anyway. Um, so let's carry on. So, uh, so for making um, playing techniques, now it, you know the sounds you can make, what you can affect, and everything else. Of course, depends on the uh, the, the sample player you're using and what available options there are. But um, the important things to remember here um, are that if you make a new option down here, and I'll edit mine, you need to set it to a playing technique. So this is the playback playing technique here. Um, and if you choose an option in here, then you also need to make sure that in the play menu in expression maps that you've also told it what to do with that. So here is the HSO violin solo, and here it is, I've told it which key switch um, to use for playback so that you can then uh, make that actually happen. And of course, make sure in the endpoint cog up here that you are using the right expression map. And if you've made your own or edited anything, then also uh, make, make sure you change it in there. So the the next option, probably the last option today that I want to look at is percussion maps. Um, so let's uh, let's have a look at one of those. So there was a, a question on Facebook, I think, about this before uh, in the week. So I'm going to add a solo player in this case, and I'm going to add a bass drum. Um, and I think I think this is what the original question was. So we'll we'll make this example. So here I'm going to make a bass drum, uh, and we'll just uh, put in some notes in here. So put a couple of notes in. Um, tell me if that's too loud on the the. Um, the video, but hopefully that's okay. So we've got a couple of bass drum notes. I know they're, um, as I call semi briefs, whole notes at the moment, but that's okay. Uh, so these notes, of course, play back because uh, we have it's loaded the right sound. However, how does it know uh, what to what to use and what to play back and everything else? So for this sound, we have a few notes down here which play. And if I actually if I move that screen over, when I play back this, and I'll just because we're bored of hearing the violin, I'm just going to mute the uh, the violin. In fact, I'll mute both. Uh, so when I play this back, 
you get a note down here, this C down here plays. It also happens to play this F sharp down here. Um, so when we go and have a look at this one and press edit, we can see that the normal notes are F sharp, which is why it's sending that key switch for normal. But there's also a roll option, which is on this C down here. So um, let's uh, the the original uh, the original question um, came about was um, when changing to GPO five I think uh, and why it wasn't playing correctly. So if you said so in play mode, uh, here is my bass drum instrument. I can add another item to my VST instrument rack, and I'm going to add the aria player, which is where the Garitan. Uh, GPO Personal Orchestra 5 sits. Um, and then I can tell my bass drum that I want it to play using the ARIA player. Uh, let's use the first channel. So I'm setting this up manually. And I can click on the little E over here. And I can, here is my ARIA player. And in the ARIA player, in slot one, because I chose slot one here, uh, I can choose from here Personal Orchestra 5 notation percussion bass drum. Now this uh, sample player isn't shipped with uh, with Dorico, but it's just an example of another sample library that you might have. I mean, it could be you know, DSL or you know um, anything else, but the particular uh, example was that somebody had GPO5 and how to make it work. So I've assigned that one um, to Garitan Personal Orchestra 5. Great. And you go back to write mode and you press play and nothing happens. Well, what something does happen, you see, and there's a note here. Um, that plays. So let me just do that again so you can see it. So you see there's a note here that plays. This C here plays, but not this note down here. So the, the option there, or the problem there is, if you go into play mode, and again, our little end point um, cog for the ARIA player, you can see that in here, there's nothing assigned at all. So if I say number of MIDI channels one, just press set to get, one, get an option here, that we need a percussion map. Now, it so happens by default that the HSO Grand Casa Combi Key Switch, which is the one that it used um, before, and I'll show you why. So the HSO one here was using that uh, Grand Casa Combi Key Switch. That was the default for bass drum. It so happens that that's close, but not quite right. So if you just chose that one and press play, then you'll get this C down here play. So the question is, why does it do that and how and how do we get it? How do we get it correct? And how do we get the samples that we actually want? So this is where I did refer to the Garitan manual. So uh, on the, the Garitan website here, I've had a look in the percussion section and it says for the bass drum, um, the uh, bass drum has a bass drum left hand sample on B1, a bass drum right hand on C2, a bass drum roll on C sharp two, which is also controlled by the mod wheel if you wanted to be, and a D2 aggressive hit for multimedia and film scores. Annoyingly, um, I also had to look up where, what they call C1 and, and C2 and where they exist because their octave um, changes are slightly different again. So let's have a look at this. So, uh, so let's set this one up properly. So if we go play, play, we, instead of expression maps, we're now looking at percussion maps. And in my percussion map editor here, I have a, an HSO Grand Casa Combi key switch, which tells me that 36 uh, was that bass drum. And 37 is also the bass drum with a roll. And there were some key switches that also happened with it. So uh, because we know those, we can kind of use those as a reference. So I'm actually going to, again, instead of making a brand new one, I'm going to duplicate that. So I've pressed duplicate. I've got a copy of it. Click this little padlock so I can edit it. And I'll call this the GPO5 bass drum percussion map. Um, what I also need to do is press this show all button here. This will show me all of the MIDI note numbers, uh, MIDI notes that are available. So here's 36. Now we know that that C uh, was right. It was one of the options. However, that was actually the right hand, according to the manual, it was the right hand bass drum option. Um, and it was, it is an instrument bass drum and the technique, actually we can change the technique to say that it's the, oops, no, right hand. Is that right hand or left? Oh, it's right hand. Um, I get my hands all up. So uh, right hand. So the technique is right hand. And I don't need a key switch for this one because it doesn't have any. So I'll delete that and press apply. So here we go, we've added that one. The note before it, um, which was listed as B1 in their manual, this is the left hand bass drum. 
And this instrument is also a bass drum, so I can just select that from the list. And the technique this time is left hand, not, not pizzicato, is left hand. And I don't need a key switch, so I can press apply. Now the, um, the roll here, uh, and I could just call that a bass drum, I'm gonna use that as a tremolo. So it says roll for the technique, but instead I'm gonna look in here for tremolo, Okay, and apply that one. Oh, I don't need the key switch, so let's delete the key switch. Could send it, but it's not going to do anything, so I'll delete it. And then on this note here, which was uh, labeled as D2, was uh, an aggressive hit. It was also the instrument bass drum. And I'm going to use this as my normal. Um, so in here, we put natural or, uh, natural or normal uh, hit. So that's going to be the one that plays most of the time. Uh, I've got a tremolo and I've got a left and right hand, okay? So in this piece here, if we uh, select these notes, let me just turn that down a bit so you don't get deafened while I'm doing this. Um, we can select some notes and from the uh, tremolos option, I can add some tremolos to those. And then from the uh, playing technique options here, if I add some more notes, so in here, I'm just pressing Y to add these because it, it just adds some different notes for me. Um, I can add some notes and I can, for example, select a note and I can say from the unpitched percussion that that's left and that that one is also left. I could also do this with a popover, I suppose, but I'll do it this way for now since I've got such a narrow screen at the moment. And then we'll have a normal note there. So we'll just do uh, put a normal note in. So and now um, what we've got is uh, these tremolo options, left, right, left, right, and uh, a normal one. So if I uh, press play on this one from the beginning, and we can also um, see what happens uh, behind in this window here. So you see we've got a roll. Uh, I'm just going to turn this up a bit. Oh, the other thing I was going to do was go to play. And for the bass drum, it said we could use CC1 to control some things. So let's use CC1 and draw in um, for a couple of bars. Let's draw those in. So just drawing in a line for CC1. So here we go. Now that's not right. So I've got something muddled up or wrong somewhere. Um, so let's have a quick check. Oh, what I've got wrong is that the aria player over here in the endpoint, I'm using the wrong percussion map. Schoolboy error. So I'll scroll down and say, actually, I would like to use, what did I call it? GPO5 bass drum. I need to use a different percussion map. So that noise that you heard was it just continuously playing the same note. So let's see what happens this time. See, it's left, right, left, right and then the, the hit at the end. So let's show that again. Near the change. So you've got a number of different hits there as it's switching from uh, from left and right and the, the normal hits. And also the, the roll here, it actually used the roll key switch and it was using the CC information that I drew in here. Um, which uses the mod wheel. So just one last time, and we'll have a look at the mod wheel. So the mod wheel is, is over here. Um, so we, and we can have a look at that move at the same time. So, okay. so there's the mod wheel moving, the information we drew in, and then playing those, those notes and the right hit at the end. So as I said, it, you know, some of this stuff at the moment is a bit rudimentary and, you know, uh, uh, the, the expression map things, they, there are more things that we can put in there, but there are also a bunch of things that there are, that are quite possible at the moment and that you can play with. So um, hopefully now you'll, you'll get the idea. Now, there are some things like um, dynamics that you can't control that way. You know, you can control them in a normal way. Um, trills, as mentioned before, um, things like that, you know, you, you, it is not possible to do. Uh, and we will be adding some of those, um, some of those features to Doricos as soon as we can, but I, I don't know when that will be. Um, there's also things that I talked about with mutual exclusions. So things like, um, you know, 
you might be able to do pits and arco, but uh, there are some things where it's a kind of a switch on and off when it applies to multiple notes until told otherwise. Uh, but we also need to to sort out some things like that and and the combinations of techniques. So what happens if you've got lots of techniques all at the same time? So those things we have uh, to, still to work on, and the uh, the iconica. Um, we're, we're aim aiming to work on a lot more of that so that we can use that by default instead of having to, to program it all yourself manually. So I'm just going to check uh, some more of the comments, but I think um, uh, that's basically it for me from for today. Um, the next session I'm planning to do uh, is at the end of August, so um, we can, at least in the Northern Hemisphere, most people are likely to be on holiday. So I, I think we'll do a session probably the last week in August uh, when we can look at... Um, some options there. So what would you like to look at? Let me know uh, on discoverdorico uh, at steinberg.de. That's the email address. Or of course, on uh, Facebook or you know, um, uh, get in touch by whichever method. So I'm just going to check the comments and then let's, uh, let's have a look. Um, Philip has asked how our dynamics controlled at the moment. I don't think you, uh, you can. As I said, there are some things that we, we still need to be able to add, uh, add on there. Um, let me just have a look at some of these other things. I think Paul's answered some of the options that are, uh, and some of the questions that people wanted in there. Um, but I don't think there's, are there any questions about things we've covered today? Let me have a look. Yeah, I think Paul's answered most of those. So there were questions about, you know, why can't you input the key switch note by name? So the answer in kind of C2 or C3. And that's because actually, depending on which sample library it is, it depends, you know, what C2 and C3 mean. So at least with a MIDI note number, um, then, you know, if you, at least then it's it's not ambiguous what we're sending or what we're asking for. But Paul said, you know, we maybe we can look into things like that in the future. Um, looking for some sounds for French symbol, you know, you'd have to see if they exist in the sample library you want to use. But like I showed with a bass drum, you can always switch to a different sample library if you want to, if there's specific sounds that you need in there. Um, but you may then need to set up a, a percussion map to access those. Um, I did do a, an expression map for GPO5 a while back, but at that point we didn't really do the a lot of the percussion in Dorico. So um, I do need to go back, uh, unless somebody beats me to it, of course, um, I'll need to go back and look at doing percussion maps for GPO5 as well so that they can uh, just be um, installed or you know added to your project easily. Um, but I think the other questions are there, uh, are answered. So I'm going to sign off for now. We'll still be there answering some questions later. So if you do have any more questions uh, about this or anything else, then please let me know. Um, the session will, of course, be available on Facebook. And I said we'll put some comments underneath. So maybe if I put a link to the um, the Garitan manual and that kind of thing for the, the percussion section, the version history document, um, and the uh, the MIDI note um, tables that, that Paul was mentioning. I'll add those in the comment in the not the comments, the information section underneath the video at the end of this session. So you can come back and refer to this session later. Um, and thank you all for watching. Um, don't forget our email address, discoverdorico at steinberg.de. Thank you. Bye.